Hi, it's me. It's Sarah. Oh, that's how you make me bigger. Okay, there we go. Hi, it's Sarah. Um, I am in Zoom studio number one, which is the standing studio. Normally, I um, have been doing my Monday uh, Facebook lives from studio number two, which is the seated studio, studio, which there's a chair right there. So that's where studio number two is. Um, so uh, continuing in the series of trying to get people into my classes, um, and succeeding. I wanted to tell you about the next couple classes that are coming up that I'll be teaching here. It'll look like this actually when I teach. This is where um, the Zoom classes happen. The only difference is that I would have um, a second camera on my hands so you can see what I'm doing close up and personal while you're doing the same thing in the privacy of your own Zoom studio, uh, which may or may not have a mannequins and a tree that's up to you. But uh, I wanted to let you know I haven't um, posted these anywhere yet except to drop hints because I'm, uh, I may have mentioned I'm getting my website worked on and I hope to have class pages up soon where I can actually take payment like a grown up. Um, but so far, um, I'm just putting it in newsletter or on Facebook uh, as an event and um, I'll get this stuff up within the next day or two. But I want to tell you about two classes. They're both sweater classes, sweater design classes, custom fit sweater design classes, because I've been oh, for years now teaching a series of classes on making sweaters that fit you based on something that you have already that either fits you or fits you pretty close. Um, my series of sweaters actually um, started with, whoops, uh-oh. I got little, here we go. My series of sweaters actually started with, um, this is a, sorry that everything I own is black. This is a shell from Eddie Bauer, you know, sleeveless shell. And it has a nice shallow neck and it had, um, you can't tell, but does the underarms come right where I want them to so that my bra doesn't show? Ditto with the neck, it's not too wide so that the straps don't show. Hi Liz, how are you? And um, I wanted, it, it got kind of sad. It's kind of, um, let's say eroding, <laughs> um, disintegrating. That's what I'm trying to think of along the edges. I wore it, I wore it to death and, um, I wanted to recreate it. I wanted to get another one, but they didn't sell them anymore. And most of the sleeveless tops these days are tank tops, not necessarily a shell. Um, but anyway, I was like, Oh, I could, I could knit one of those. So I did, um, and it looks, whoops, I keep hitting something with my clothing. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. Oh, it's because I'm on the keyboard. <laughs> okay, I got it. Nothing to see here. <laughs> so here it is. This is that shell knit in Euroflex linen from Louette, and it fits exactly the same. And so that's my theory is if I have something I like in my closet, why not knit it again or knit it um, and then again and again. So. Um, the sleeveless shell became another sleeveless shell. It became a short sleeve sweater. It's navy blue at least, so maybe you can see it. And this is um, part of the continuing chronicle of if I knit something, then the yarn will be discontinued. This is Barocco, Barocco Smart Cotton. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, and I also have made um, a short sleeve sweater that's way on the other side of this table, so I'm not going to go get it. And, um, and then we were doing, we being my students and I were um, working on long sleeved sweaters, pullovers, and then people were rebelling and saying, yeah, but I don't want a pullover. I want to make a cardigan. And I'm like, all right, fine, fine. So the next class we did, you had a choice of pullover or cardigan. And then that, if you've heard the phrase um, herding cats, that's pretty much how that was because uh, Pullovers and cardigans are two different animals. Um, pullovers can be done in the round a lot of the way, and cardigans normally are not done in the round, um, even part of the way. And uh, yeah, it became hard to keep everybody on the same page in my brain. So um, then I just, I got smart and I said, okay, let's just do a cardigan. So we did a cardigan. I took, oops, it's over here. I chose to do a V-neck. Um, and this, I didn't get done yet. I'm not done. My students are done. 
I'm not done. So we're going to teach the class again, we being me. I'm going to see if I can get this glare. No, I can't get it off, can I? Okay. Sorry. Um, yes, Liz says cardigans are very versatile. Also, if you're a woman of a certain age, you want to have layers that you can take off more quickly than a pullover. That's actually the <laughs> versatility that I'm looking for. But my latest uh, sweater that I'm knitting along with my students is a cardigan. It's a v-neck um, and I am almost done. I have the buttonholes in there. I have the, thanks Liz, I have the buttons. I think I, I did. I showed you these when I talked about the buttons and zippers class. You can see them a little better up here than you could in my chair. Oh, they're so pretty. I guess I could sew them on. I mean, that part's done. Duh. And um, it's a little bit longer. I'm going to do this thing. You can see a little bit behind the scenes. Sorry. But it's longer. It's more of a high hip. Um, so on me, that would be... Uh, below the curve, if you know what I mean. Your most flattering spots um, for a sweater to hit are above your um, hips and below your hips. So this is a low hip and um, it's a little bit of an A-line because our hips are often wider than other parts that we're trying to cover. So um, there's some A-line shaping here. It hasn't been blocked yet. It's a little puffy. And then I thought, you know, I always tell people they have to use um, stockinette stitch so we can focus on the shaping and the sizing. So let's stay away from stitch patterns because that adds different math um, potentially to the calculations and everybody's like maybe nervous about doing the math. So, um, but I thought, because I like to break my own rules, what if I put stripes in? So pretty sure I showed you this with the buttons the other day. So this is the swatch I came up with um, for the cardigan and I'm using Mountain Meadows uh, wool, which is this one, Lalora. And um, fun fact, this yarn is dyed over the natural sheep colors. So you can get a lot of um, variation within the yarns. And it's American sheep and American yarn. So these are my four colors. There's this green, <laughs> Where the heck is it there? See how there's different greens in there? And this is like a periwinkle-ish that goes to kind of a pale something munge, pale munge, as opposed to bright munge. And this one, a very a, a crazy um, step for me going with a red violet instead of a blue violet, but that's, um, hmm, it's coming across blue violet on the screen, but it's redder in person. And a surprise gold. Uh, what's it called? Oh, it's called, oh, prairie. Yeah, so we have prairie, pansy, I don't know, lupine, and um, green, which is called fern. But these, these are sport weight. You know, it's weird. On Ravelry, they say that they're... Um, Fingering weight, I think, and we have them at Woven Art in the in the fingering section. But um, it is it says three ply sport right there. See, I'm not lying. And it's 185 yards to two ounces, which you know that doesn't help. That's more than three, and a, it's more than um, 50 grams. Yeah, it's not it's not a fingering weight. It's not a fingering weight. It's a thin fingering or a thick fingering or maybe a light sport. But anyway. Um, and then for the black, because, oh, so I was planning the sweater and um, using those four colors, trying, I may have told you this, I apologize, but I was trying not to make a black sweater because I wear a lot of black. And um, I was very proud of myself. And my friend Marilyn looked at my color selection and she said, you need black in there. And I said, I'm trying not to make a black sweater. And she said, you are not going to wear that sweater if it's not a black sweater. So I'm like, oh, she's right. I wouldn't wear it. So I, I so it's a black sweater. And for the black, um, because there wasn't a solid black, there wasn't even a black black, uh, non-solid black in the um, Lalura from Mountain Meadows. So I'm using Quince and Company Chickadee, whoop, which is a sport weight as well. Um, yeah, is it also a three ply? I don't know. I didn't care. And um, yeah, so that's that's this. So that was my swatch. I got my stitch gauge, my row gauge. I figured out my. Um, 
stripe sequence. And then, yeah, here it is. This is it. I don't know, can you see? If I step back, it lights up a little bit maybe. But there's my stripe sequence. And um, it's, it's all done except blocking and buttons. And guess what? It's a cardigan, it's not a vest. So I still need to make the sleeves. And a lot of my, most of my, let's try that again. All of my sweater design classes so far have had um, top down set in sleeves that are not sewn in. They're picked up and worked down with short rows. And I have samples, little samples with stripes where the stripes match up. And I insisted to everybody that you could do that with from the top down with the stripes. And when I started my sleeve picked up and started working the stripes back and forth, the right color was never in the right place. So um, I'm like, you know, screw it. This time when we do sweater design, we're gonna sew in the sleeve. <laughs> so we have to, I'm teaching the class so that I can finish the sweater. But the, we're still gonna do the sleeve from the top down. It's gonna have the same math to it, but we're gonna sew it in. So we get a, a bonus skill for this one. I do, I do try to do something different each time. So if you wanted to take this class and you already took another class, you would learn something new. And there's a lot of safety pins, not because I'm um, reliving my punk rock days, but because that's how I count rows. Although really, um, oh yeah, that's how I count rows, but I didn't need to because I have stripes. This is where my decreases are for my v-neck. See them? They're all sparkly. I won't wear them that way. And then, um, yeah, so that's the first class that I want to talk about. And it starts, I was going to, I made a little document so I can put it in the chat um, in anticipation of getting it on um, in my newsletter and as an event. So I'm going to copy this. And come find you again on Zoom. Not Zoom, where are we? And I'm going to go to the, oh, Soka, hi. You know, she says, um, all black sleeves maybe. I'm like, I thought about that, but then I thought, no, no, I know how to do the, um, the top down with the stripes. But then it turns out I don't want to do the top down with the stripes, but I still want the stripes. Um, there, that's this class. So, um, and then Liz says that it looks nice. Is it all stockinette? Yes, because while we focus on the shaping and the sizing, I want it to be all stockinette so you don't have to worry about a stitch repeat fitting in um, or staying consistent or anything. So um, that starts January 23rd. All of my classes are going to be Saturdays from 1.30 to 3.30 Eastern time. Um, that's PM, not AM. And so I, I put in there, the classes are, sorry, my eyes itchy today. Um, January 23rd, February 27th, March 27th, April 24th, and May 29th. So one per month. Um, and then there's a breakdown in there of, of how the classes will um, flow from one to the other. And there's at least, there's like a month of knitting in between. And I don't care if you keep up, as long as you show up. I, my notes are detailed and have spaces for all the math and I, I make you do the math in front of me. Um, and if you have questions in between, I, I help you with um, your questions and re-looking at the math. And we talk about swatching and the first class, I don't expect you to have swatched or to have picked out your um, yarn yet or colors. We're gonna um, talk about that as well in the first session. So the first session will get you um, ready to go yarn shopping. If you don't already have yarn, it'll get you familiar with the sizes that you need to make. Um, we can talk about if you want to do stripes. I'm, I'm obviously doing stripes because I'm two thirds of the way done with mine. But um, if you want to do stripes, then we can talk about the colors you would choose or how you would go about arranging them. I have some fun ideas for that. Um, and you may have some ideas I hadn't thought of as well. You probably will. Um, so it's fun to um, go back in class. Anna just popped up because she took the cardigan class. She didn't put stripes in hers because we weren't really, really concentrating on that, but she did do um, contrasting borders, uh, which turned out really nicely. And uh, yeah, she finished hers and put it, um, put a picture of her wearing it on Facebook recently, Anna Scott, uh, not to be confused with Julia Roberts. Um, yeah, that's my inside joke. So, what else do we want to know about that class? Anything? Hmm. I don't have any more props to show you. That's the sweater design class. Starts January 23rd. Before that, I have another class coming up. Um, also custom fit. Also design your own. 
um, this one's going to be a vest, no sleeves, a bottom up or top down, sewn in or, or picked up. This vest is based on, again, from something from my closet and you know, it's black. There's a shock and a half, but this is a vest from Target. Oh, I shouldn't have worn a black shirt today. Sorry. Um, there, it's got this cool fabric. It's a five month class, Liz. January, March, April, May. Yep. One per month. Um, one Saturday per month. Uh, yeah, it's got this cool fabric. It's got this faux leather um, trim around the very deep armholes. It's got this wide collar. And then it's really long. See, it keeps going forever. Forever. And then it's got these really long slits. Let's see. Oh, boy. There. Really long slits. And on me, I'm five... I'm going to say 5'8". I'm not 5'8". I would like to be 5'8". I've always wanted to be 5'8", but I've, the highest I've gotten is 5'7 and 3 quarters. Um, and if you want to know why it matters that I didn't make 5'8", is because I used to wear legs pantyhose. Remember legs pantyhose? I don't know if they still exist. But um, the break between regular and queen size was 5'8". And I knew I needed to wear a queen size, but I was only 5'7 and 3 quarters, so I kept buying regular. And then I'd get pissed off because they kept they wouldn't pull up high enough because guess what? I needed to wear queen size, even though I was only five, seven and three quarters. So at some point, yes, like a duster length. At some point I started buying the queen size, even though I never made it to five, eight. So that's how I live my life. Um, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> um, here, yeah, there, there's the slit and it's just really, I've got my slippers on. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so it's just really swingy and this cost me, I believe $7 and 88 cents off of the clearance rack at Target. And I thought, what the hell? And I bought it and I wore it and people were complimenting me all over the place. The problem with this is getting in and out of a car and putting on a winter coat and sitting in a chair. But as long as you never do any of those things, you're fine. Um, oh, I just tossed that over there. I hope I don't reg regret that. So I decided... I could knit that, right? That, you know, $7.88 and you get what you pay for. So that fabric, while cool looking, isn't very durable and I'm getting big snags and things and I could fix them or I could make my own. So um, there's yarn, huh, there's yarn that is made in Michigan. Um, and it's a company called Stonehenge Fiber Mill. It's in East Jordan, Pennsylvania. What the hell? East Jordan, Michigan, um, north of me, quite a ways north of me, and maybe west. I don't really know where it is. It's up there. And they make shepherd's wool, which is a worsted weight wool um, comparable to Plymouth Galway or um, Cascade 220. And, uh, you know, a workhorse yarn. And they used to, with the leftovers, so it was, a I don't know, three ply, four ply, some plies, and when one of the plies, the cone or whatever, the spool that the ply was on, when it ran out, um, they would have, how am I saying this? Any of their leftovers that didn't go into a full skein of yarn, that's what I'm trying to say, um, they weren't enough to go into a full skein of yarn, were randomly put together into a hmm, three, two ply, two ply, three ply, crap, <laughs> a two ply, there we go, a two ply, and called mill ends. So for example, this is a mill end. Now they've become so popular that now they do it on purpose. They don't just use their um, leftovers, their mill ends. So now it's called crazy. No two are alike. There you go. Um, and so this one, and no two are alike. They are truly unique. Somebody just stands at a plying machine, if that's what they're called, and just feeds in whatever colors. And when one runs out, runs out they, um, Get another one going and just keep going. So here's another one. And sometimes the repeats are long and sometimes they're short. So if I were, if, 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 which I'm going to do, I like the blues too. Yeah, this would have made it into the vest if I had found it earlier. So, you know, here's just, and I've been, I've got quite a few things I've been making out of these mill ends. 
and it's wool. It's 100% wool. It's not super wash. It's a nice, um, a nice sport weight wool, another sport weight. I like this, the thinner weights because they um, have a little more drape to them. And this, uh, once you wind it into a ball, you can kind of see what the, uh, I know, dream job. I don't know, Anna, if that's a dream job. Um, you got to go there, right, to see it. Um, I, I'm sure you're referring to the person who makes the crazy yarn. I think after a while, you'd get really bored. <laughs> but everyone would love you. You'd be everyone's favorite person. But when you'd wind it on a ball winder, you can see the order of the colors, the way they're going to go. And this one has a lot of contrast to it. This one did not have as much contrast. It was all blues. And so when you've got two, and so they're all, um, they're all uh, shepherd's wool colors. Yeah. So, and then you get a marl of whichever um, ones they happen to be using and they don't both change at the same time. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You know, one will change and then another one will change. So it's kind of a long repeat, except there's no repeat. Long color, thing. Anywho, I decided I wanted to make that vest, which had a racer back. I don't know if you caught that. I didn't, oh, dog's gonna bark because the motorcycle just went by. Um, it has a racer back. There she goes. Has a racer back. Um, I don't care about the racer back, so I chose not to do that. And it's, it cut in quite a bit on the, um, yeah, I'm just pretending, on the shoulder too. And I didn't want that either. So the good thing about designing your own is you get to make the decisions and make changes. So one of the requirements for this class is that you find things that fit you the way you want your new garment to fit. But if you don't have anything that fits you the way you want it to fit, it, they still work because you can say, well, I like this, but I wish that the V was deeper or I wish the V was shallower or I like this, but I wish the neck was more open or less open or I wish it was long sleeves or short sleeves. So if you have something that's not right, but you know why it's not right, then that helps you to make your dream garment. And if you have um, the perfect uh, bust circumference on one garment and the perfect neckline on another and the perfect length on another, then you need all of those and we'll, we'll put them all together and make one perfect garment. So that's, that's how my sweater design classes go. Actually, you don't even need me now. You can just go do that. But what I did, um, was one night when I was, you know, watching Netflix, I uh, just, ca I, well, so this is, I didn't really, I didn't really swatch. Um, but what I did was I cast on some stitches and then I made a really big rectangle of garter stitch. Cause, um, and this is pre COVID, but you know, now we all need pretty garter stitch things. So um, this is uh, as wide as my shoulders are. So I measured, I'm going to go with 14. I don't remember what it was, but let's say it was 14. So if you know what your gauge is in garter stitch, this is the second time I did it because the first time wasn't right because I didn't do a game swatch. But anywho, uh, this is the width of my shoulders. And then it's just a rectangle. It goes all the way down. And just to throw more into, you know, the, the, mix, throw some more dishes on the plate. I don't know, the spinning dishes, spinning plates, um, irons in the fire. I don't know. I used three different mill ends. And so every ridge I changed between the three. So not only was the color very slowly changing, but the color changes were very slowly changing between the three colors as well. And this is where I started and I really liked the green, but those uh, mill ends didn't stay green. So the color changes. <laughs> it's very long also. And it ended with some a uh, little bit of green again. But when it was long enough, and how long? As long as that vest. I decided to make it just as long as that vest. And um, so that's just a rectangle. And then I made, which I made twice because I didn't do a game swatch the first time. But guess what? When I had to remake it, I used the first one that wasn't the right size as a gauge swatch. So that worked out well, <laughs> you know. Anywho, so then um, didn't you used to say how many garter projects you have? This shows how much you have going on in life. If I didn't, <laughs> yes, let's say I did say that. And I have a lot of garter stitch going on right now. 
Um, yeah, garter stitch is like highly um, underrated. It's, it's and you know we need we need comfort knitting. So then, bright idea. Um, I took the back and I figured out. Uh, yeah, I divided it in two. I think. I figured out how wide the fronts needed to be based on that other garment. And then I cast on, you know, that much. And I did a rectangle as tall as the back. And then I was all proud of myself. And then I was like, oh crap, I meant to do a V-neck. So it can't be a rectangle all the way up. It has to narrow down to here. So I tore it back to where the V-neck starts. And then I did that part again. And then I cast on the other front. And the exact same thing happened. I got to the top and I was like, oh crap, I meant to do a V-neck. So phew, not very bright these days. But, um, uh, and this, I mean, each piece is different. I was I was aiming for that green and blue um, combo, which I got to down here. But really I was, this is also an exercise in not um, being in control all the time, which is hard for me. So I let the colors stay wherever they were. And this one was my least favorite down here because it just muddied. It's, it's um, yeah, but it's really actually very, uh, let me just pull my mannequin over. Whoops. Now it's in the tree. <laughs> Nothing to see here. There we go. Um, yeah, one of these, this one. It's not bad. At, nope, that's not the one. That's the good one. And that's the back. Where it is. It's this one. This one I just showed you. <laughs> is that the muddy one? I don't know. I don't think it is. I lost the muddy one. I don't know where it went. That's so funny. This is it. Wow. This is it. So it's not really muddy at all. It's just not as um, exciting to me. It's actually quite pretty. It doesn't match the rest of the garment, but I don't care. So then, boy, that's a long, boring story. So then, um, three needle bind off, I think, or maybe I sewed the top, I don't remember. I wrote it down somewhere. Sorry, you can't see this. Ah! Oh. And then, um, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the mirror image thing again. I can't figure this out. Okay, and then I filled in the gaps because these were just straight up and down based on the width of my shoulders. Um, so then I filled in the gaps with yet more black yarn, shepherd's wool from Stonehenge Fiber, the same company that makes the mill ends. Now the mill ends are sport weight and shepherd's wool is worsted weight. And I, I was fine with that because I wanted to, um, the target vest is really drapey and I wanted to keep the really drapey so I used, um, I don't know, a five, I think, needle. Let's not say the size, because I'm a loose knitter, so my sizes are all off from everybody else's sizes anyway. That was the idea. Selka says very slimming. That was the idea. Um, if you can line it up with your shoulders, then that's all the wider you are, right? Uh, none of this matters. This is all just, it's not there. Um, I used a bigger needle than I normally would for the sport weight yarn so that that fabric remains really, um, really fluid. And then I was a little nervous about it being garter stitch and so long and, and the weight of it stretching it out because I didn't really want it. It's only about six inches or eight inches from the floor and I didn't want it to actually stretch to the floor. So I used um, the worsted weight on the same needle, which is smaller than I would normally use for worsted weight. And this part goes up and down. I don't know, Eliz Elizabeth. It's um, she's asking what the what the gauge was. It's different for the um, sport weight than for the worsted, but I I used them together. I used them on a, a one ridge to one stitch ratio, so I used them as if they were the same. I have it written down somewhere. Um, but I was hoping that using the worsted on a tighter needle this way would hold the sport weight on a looser needle together. And so far it has. I've had this hanging on a mannequin for a long time and it hasn't gotten any longer. Phew! That's the kind of thing you can't tell from a swatch if you, if you swatched. Because uh, until you have the weight of all the um, yarn, the whole garment, you don't really know 
how you cannot really predict how gravity is going to affect it. But those were decisions I made based on what I sort of knew. And, and mostly it worked out, except for that whole part where I didn't do a swatch. So there's no buttons on this. It's just an open thing, open thing. And it's, it's done. It's actually done. Isn't the back pretty? Um, it's done, except I'm not. And then I did some, sorry, I did some um, short rows to make this uh, gusset wider at the bottom because I'm wider at the bottom. And I'm not 100% sure that I'm leaving them in there. So it's done, but I'm not positive. So I'm, that's another reason I'm teaching this class was is so that I can finish my sweater um, and make those decisions. It can be a scarf. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Actually, it is. <laughs> um, let's see. So that one, let me put that in the chat as well. I made another little document for that with just the basics and I'll, I'll put out, I just need to write, like figure out what the supplies and the homework, there's no homework. The, um, the fancy language is called uh, romance, pattern romance. And I need to um, get that figured out so I can put it out in a newsletter and or, and a Facebook event. Okay, here we go. Back to here, back to there. Well, we're calling this long swingy vest very uh, exciting name. So how do I post that? There we go. All right. So that's in there too. Um, yeah. So those will show up soon. Uh, this one starts January 2nd, which is actually uh, like two weeks ish, a little less than three weeks. Um, that's the best because that one's super easy. That's, I mean, once we get started, it's three rectangles, but they're not, two of them have a V. Uh, don't forget like I did. But if you, if you haven't taken one of my sweater design classes before, I hold your hand, not literally, almost all the way through. Any math that you have to do is done with me looking over your shoulder and telling you what buttons to push on the calculator. So it shouldn't be scary math-wise. Um, we keep it pretty simple. You do not have to use crazy millens, by the way. Um, I kind of want to do it again. My friend Diane spun me some beautiful yarn it's guess what dark purple and black so you know you wouldn't see that either but um i think i have enough so that i could do the whole thing out of that and that would be really pretty um so i'm thinking of making another one because i have all the time in the world <laughs> why not uh but you can use whatever yarn you want it's a nice showcase um the panels on the fronts and the back are a nice showcase for something interesting and then if you use something kind of innocuous on the sides then you know we don't draw attention to how wide we are. We just draw attention to how beautiful our yarn is on the front and the back. So, hmm, I think that's all I had to tell you for those two classes. They're starting in January. It is a lot of yarn, but you know what? I have a lot of yarn. You probably have a lot of yarn. I, um, I will have, uh, when I get the supplies figured out, uh, see, we won't know how much you need until we have the first session and talk about how big you're going to make yours and how long, because I know there were some people locally um, who wanted to make it, but they're not as tall as I am and they didn't want to make it as long. They wanted to make more of a low hip instead of a, a high ankle <laughs> garment, and that's absolutely fine. So we won't know how much yarn it is until, um, until those decisions are made, but uh, I can weigh this one and figure out approximately... Yeah, like I can get the total weight. I thought I kept track of how much of each of the yarns I used, the, the sport weight versus the um, worsted, but we'll have to find that piece of paper. Uh, but I'll, I'll have that. That's the kind of, that's why I don't have the classes up yet because I don't know that information yet, but I'm working on it. So unless you have some questions, more questions for me, I think that's about it. Watch for those um, classes coming soon to a, a newsletter near you. I believe that on my Sarah Peasley Hinnett or Facebook page, there's a sign up for my newsletter. If not, um, there is one on my website, sarahpeasley.com. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say goodbye. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments and I'll answer them later. All right. Thanks for watching. Nice to see you guys.